It's a weird time to be a yachty. There's a new attention on the industry that has just never been there before. It's all got a bit mm, heavy. Remember when you used to struggle to explain to people that no, you don't work on a cruise ship. We were off the radar and that was just fine. We were the oddball friends that flew home with shuntans, charter tips, and mad stories. Reality shows have filled in some of those blanks, but now, unfortunately for some, real notoriety has arrived in the form of the front page of the Daily Mail, and even worse, sanctioned lists. Russian-owned yachts are listed as assets of very bad people. The crew, well, they're the new stormtroopers on the Death Star. There have been examples of this kind of scrutiny before. Remember the BHS destroyer banner some wise guy stuck on the side of Philip Green's yacht in 2016? That was during the retail magnate's pension deficit scandal. Not a comfortable day for the crew. Even further back in the 90s, Robert Maxwell fell to his death from his yacht as it was emerging how much money he'd stolen from his company's pension fund. Seriously, what is it with these guys and pension funds? Anyway, those were isolated incidents and the alleged crimes of the owners were white collar in nature. The crew were probably bewildered and had a grim meeting that day, were probably briefed to avoid press and wait for it all to die down. Now, an entire nationality of owners deemed unacceptable and linked to a war. Not fraud or financial criminality, actual hideous, bloody war. Overnight, not only do their crew's jobs hang in the balance, but the moral plates have shifted seismically under their feet. Questions are popping up that are making brains hurt. Are we bad people if we work for bad people? Is it bad to work for an owner who is alleged to have done bad things? How many owners, or indeed humans, have perfect track records? I guess the key question is how bad is bad? We know that owners can be a mixed bag. Nothing encroaches on your naivety, like sharing a crew mess with an armed bodyguard. But owners and guests make up less of our lives than non yachties suspect. On a charter yacht especially, our job changes little day to day. Whether we have Beyonce on board or a despot, graft is graft. When it comes to morals, most of us have an asshole yardstick and measure ourselves accordingly. When it comes to our own personal conduct as crew, some of us try hard not to let ourselves be corrupted by opportunities in the industry to lie, cheat, or take backhanders. But now, on a macro scale for many crew, whether they are good, bad, or ugly, things have taken on a world politicy vibe. Personal conduct isn't being questioned, just who you work for. This Russian situation, it's tricky. As crew, do we write off working for an entire nationality of owners? Let's face it, Russian oligarchs own some of the biggest boats and have the most vacancies. Some are fantastic employers, some are not. Maybe some of us would opt to avoid them now, but what do we do if we were already working for that? What if we started when our country's governments were fully condoning them, allowing them to buy football clubs, property, newspapers, and even passports? The UK, whose own governing party has taken donations from prominent Russians at one point, even threatened to sanction yacht crew who work for them. That kind of smacks of hypocrisy, doesn't it? If there is guilt by association, then what about working for disgraced British tycoons or people from countries with poor human rights? I find myself wondering if there would be many boats left to work on. If we're going to get moral in our employment choices, do we expect the same of our friends who work for alcohol or tobacco brands or tech companies using questionably mined cobalt? You can see where this is going. If we follow the money and power upwards, how many of us work for really good people? When does morality have to give way to unpleasant realism? Are land-based workers even asking themselves these questions? Ultimately, the one thing we do know about yacht owners is that these are the richest people in the world. And don't most people in the world ultimately work for them indirectly, if not directly? Crew working for Russian-owned yachts are suddenly very visible employees. But is it any worse than working as a physio at an oligarch's football club or being an office worker in their corporation? Those crew now on sanctioned or seized boats were probably just bumbling through their day, sorting the watch rota, filling out marpole sheets, figuring out why the shoe basket is overflowing, again. 
The next minute, they're on the wrong side of history. If the juniors do, folding towels in the laundry of a Russian-owned yacht responsible for the owner's political sympathies, crews sometimes stay aboard yachts sold to entirely new owners. Same job, different owner. They are about as politically engaged with the bloke in charge as a downing street cat. Many of us who have worked for Russians in the past have seen that their family groups and parties on board are often a mix of Russian and Ukrainian nationalities. If their spouses and families are mixed, we could be accused of working for the bad and the good guys all at once. On the other hand, seeing the atrocity occurring in Ukraine and then seeing the boss's name on a sanction list would be really distressing. I'm not sure how I would coast. A therapist once pointed out to me that a lot of yacht crew are avoided by nature. Why do you think you ran away to sea to start with? She asked with a cheeky glint. And in my case, it was true. I liked that yachting often felt outside of heavy, burdensome, real life stuff. And I could lose myself in a parallel world of hard slog, charter deadlines, and hedonism. Now, for many crew, it's not so easy to hide. If the guy whose bed you've made for the past three years is even remotely involved in blowing up civilians in Ukraine, the real world is asking real questions of you. Unless you have a heart of stone, you're probably asking them of yourself. How does that make you feel? How will you feel if all this ends eventually and he steps back on board? I'm lucky that I am not in that position, but I've worked plenty for Russian owners over the years. I have no answers and I've reached no conclusion to what I believe the crew of Russian owned yachts should do. It's easy to demand that yachties make a stand, but many don't have that option. They have financial commitments, they are scared, and they don't know what to do. Although it was rash and dangerous, I do understand why the Ukrainian engineer tried to sink his Russian-owned yacht in Mallorca. Feelings are running high. I also think he may have hurt himself in his own career more than his owner. So is taking a stand the luxury of those financially secure enough to do so? I have had colleagues from the Philippines who are supporting their entire extended family back home. Do they walk off? No, they can't. I totally understand sanctions and the seizing of assets as a desperately needed bid to end this war. But when it comes to judging the crew of seized yachts for not walking off, well, if we didn't ask it of the lady who claimed to lose at Chelsea FC, the players at Arsenal or the journalists at the Evening Standard, then maybe we shouldn't be asking yacht crew either. <laughs>